Okay. So I got this new microphone. So I'm gonna wait for you guys to tap in so I know if it works or not. Let's give it time. <laughs> Hey guys, could you let me know if, uh, hey Isabella, can you let me know if you can hear me? If the sound is good or not? Awesome! My mother wanted to see if she's not friends with people. <laughs> well, welcome. Friends are always welcome. So I, um, I uh, last week I on my iPad I had these questions that were sent by email but unfortunately I didn't realize that my iPad went out of power so I am gonna have to wait for you guys to ask your questions for this Q&A <laughs> you can hear me and you can see me amazing Hey, Stitzy! So, while we're waiting for people to set in and asking your first questions, let me start with saying this supermoon has been extremely intense. And um, I think that I don't speak uh, for only me if I say that there's a lot of... It is as if whatever have laid there under the surface, needing to be seen, needing to be heard, needing to get attention, just came straight to the surface. So many people who have deal with old traumas, which still sort of kind of need to be released for the system, has come up in this time period. And people who have suppressed anger, uh, it comes up in this period. So this period, <laughs> a super moon, um, has been quite intense for humanity, which is very good. Um, so if you sit home and you think that you're the only one, I just want to tell you, you are not. You are part of the collective, part of the shift which is going on, and it brings so much beauty with it. But the truth is that this timeline that we are moving in right now so much is going on on so many levels that means that there's so many different uh, energetic fields that we can tap into so many different energetic fields that are very intense um, so if we have openings for that in whatever form we will feel it we will be part of the flow but the beautiful thing in all of this is that by facing it by facing every aspect of oneself and be okay with it you are able to integrate within yourself and feel peace within with everything that you are in this moment and when you're able to do it in that form that will be what you send out that will be your reflection out to the world your could contributions to this world reality that we live in right now so how can we change the world start inside so guys this is a Q&A so whatever questions you have please write it in the comments below then it works best or else I will just tap into the universe with all the questions there might be um, yeah what else is there to be said There's a lot of opinions about what is going on. There's a lot of truth and fake news and there's a lot in between. There's a lot of confusion, picking out which side we should take and so on. But what if it's not about duality? What, is it, what if it's just about finding, finding out how to feel the most peace and the most alive within this now, within the moment that we have, within the, the period that we are in. What if it doesn't matter 
if it is the good or if it's the bad, if it's the white or if it's the black. What if it doesn't matter? Because everything is part of one, part of creation, part of existence. So what truly matters is the choices that you make within this period, within yourself, within within this holy gram that you have chosen to be a part of. Because everything is energy. And whatever you do suppress in your system will show around you. So before you start fighting those around you, look into what it is you truly are fighting within yourself or neglecting to see within yourself. Hey everyone! Okay, let's see. The first question. I met my guide the day before yesterday in the forest at the Pilish. It was magical. And now my question is, how do you feel about Epiblis? Ep 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 do you know what that is? And how can and how can we work with it? Epiblis. Ep ep Sweetie pie, I don't understand the word epiplis. Ep Do you mean the moon thing or like eclipse or where are we? You have to. Can you rephrase this question and uh, and write it below? I would love to look into it, but I'm not sure I understand it well. Anouk, how can I help my dog? I know uh, I know an animal as. I don't know an animal as passionate about running or hunting as she is, but now she has become so serious injured that it may never be possible again. How can I help my dog? So, animals come into our life in order of representing mostly love sometimes challenging but mostly love we create so deep bonds to them that it is as if they are part of ourselves, which they are when they are deeply injured or they are in pain you are in pain as well and often they are reflecting what is going on within within you or within family members or etc the best way you can help your dog is talking to her is to feel um to allow it to be exactly where it is and support it as much as possible within the position that it is in. You can always heal it, of course, and practice that part of yourself because you are a healer, you're born a healer, so of course you should use your powers for that. Um, and for the rest, just support her exactly where she's at. And then when that is done, you can look, how can I reflect this back to my own life situation? I hope it made a bit of sense. <laughs> Isabella, I'm in a car with three people, so I just watch you without sound. Reading the comments, you look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Isabella. That's the greatest question of the day. <laughs> Miranda, hey Lisa, I have a question about my son. I see that he's struggling inside of himself. He have resistance against his life, things what need to be done like school how can i help him how can uh, have it to do with me so let's look. your son is sensitive and he are not well he is expression emotions but he's not well aware of his emotions and what they mean so they come out in these outbrushes of um overload it is not easy for him to understand the reason behind that he have to do things that doesn't feel good, that doesn't uh, speak to his heart or speak to his whatever he feels he wants. For him to sit down and focus in, in class or sit down and doing homework has no meaning. It is not what uh, is aligned with his sole purpose or whatever he wants to do <laughs> as a kid. So. So then what happens is that he shift perception into oh they want me to do all the time this and this and that and that and that and 
and then he aren't resistant of that, so he start fighting you, and whoever else is around him who try to control him. He is a sensitive person, um, and he don't understand. Like uh, his soul on the on a in the level level, he don't understand the value of having to do the tasks that you ask him to or people ask him to do. So the best way you can support him. The best way you can support him is as much as possible to allow him to be just the way he is and make only a few straight guidelines for what he has to do. So not too many tasks, just a few ones that is a rule that they always is there. So he has a structure, so he has stability and for the rest try to give him as much freedom as possible. Um, for him it doesn't work that he is pushed. If you push him he will not learn anymore. Uh, even that uh, most people say well if you do his homework then he will learn something. But if you are in a state of resistance and hate every time you do your homework you are not learning. So essentially it is to, well not yet, yet in a few years, f help him to figure out what actually yeah, what, what makes him excited about life, what, what he actually would like to do. It, there is truth lying within that he is a reflecting of you. He is a reflecting of a part of you and that part of you, you can reflect back and see within him. So that is for you to look into and realize what is uh, shown within him, within yourself. I'm pretty sure you didn't like school either. <laughs> Um, resistant of the world, yeah, definitely. He feels himself, he feels the people around him, he don't know exactly where to place himself. He is actually a lot smarter than what uh, what may occur, but he needs to learn to trust himself and to express himself in a form where he feels seen and heard and wants to be seen. But he's not there yet. I hope, I hope this helped you a bit. Uh, Anna, no, it's kind of a spiritual body part. You can read about it on the internet if you're curious. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I, I have not I have not heard the word before. Anna, I will uh, I can look it up. I can look it up and we can talk about it uh, next time for sure. A spiritual body part, like an extra body part. Oh, I have four legs. That would be so cool. <laughs> this is my spiritual arm. Oh, hookah, hookah. Um, Patricia, we want to buy a puppy, <laughs> but we have to choose where we want to take it. Uh, this person are tools and marked, and we cannot choose. You want to buy a puppy? We have to choose where we want to take it. Or where you want to buy it from. These person are tools and margaret. We cannot choose. So I am the spiritual person who look into the deeper meaning behind things and it is for sure not up to me to choose which puppy you should choose. No. You need to choose that yourself. So what you can look into is which puppy makes you feel the most happy inside. Which puppy makes you feel the most peace or the most smiling. And which puppy feels the most as ease around you? So if you cannot choose for yourself, maybe let the puppy choose you. That's what I do with the stones. Chichana. Hey Lisa, I have a question about my body and how I can support it better. Both claiming it from stress, calming it from stress and also healing my right side of the body, especially my legs, so the energy is aligned and flowing through. Uh, it feels like the energy is not flowing good. Um, okay, so step number one, you should look into your lower spine. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's too close to the camera. You should look into your spine and also um, your body is a straight it is a straight reflection of your emotional life, what you are going through and what you have been going through. Your body is always mirroring whatever emotion within you there is unexpressed. So as you are coming closer and closer to yourself and refinding balance, 
there is this part that would like to just be stronger and stronger and stand up for what she believes in and all this and this part may uh, overlook smaller feelings smaller emotions that uh, needs attention that needs to be seen that needs to be heard even that you are stronger than that now so uh, this period in time is really about acknowledging these small annoying feelings these small things we think eh, it's not that important i'm stronger you are stronger but the energy on planet earth is shifting so fast right now so if we don't clean out the closet trust me it's gonna be harder in the long run so uh, exercise today not only for you but for everyone could be to allow yourself to go to wherever place in the body that hurts and give that place a voice so it can be like this little kid screaming for attention right or it can be for example me being super angry i had this anger attack the other day it was so cool i was so angry i thought man if my blood pressure if i had a blood pressure it would be so high i would pass out you know so it is fully to embrace the suppressed emotions which is unexpressed um, and then it would flow then it will flow and um, so the best way of handling stress is actually stress release and I'm not talking about sitting down and breathing because you are a person who does that quite a lot I am talking about action moving expression fire okay you're welcome Tatiana you do messing Thank you, it helped a lot, and see the reflection. Great, Miranda. Yes, thank you, you're welcome. Let go or hold on to usual partners. Well, that is also up to you. Everything is shifting and transforming at this moment. That means that as everyone is transforming, some people will stay aligned, other people will grow more and more apart. It is an individual journey as a collective. Um, so you need to feel into if you feel home patterns oh, okay <laughs> let go or hold on to usual patterns that makes more sense patterns i'm sorry <laughs> patterns yes if your pattern suits you if your pattern doesn't harm you if your pattern just is Maybe that is not where your focus should be. We can often stare ourselves uh, blind in in expansion, 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 shifting pattern, releasing patterns over and over, and somehow we forget to live in between because we are so busy fixing ourselves. So sometimes all we really need to do is like look in the mirror. What do I see? What is here right now? How can I love this in this very moment with everything that it holds without fixing it? How can I just love existence and being? And I truly believe that is where you should start. If your patterns are no longer a match to you, it will feel disaligned. It will feel as a burden. It will feel as something you would want to change. And then it's time to look into it. But step number one for change is also really truly accepting yourself in this moment. Definitely that is what this, <laughs> this period right now is about that. It's about acceptance and seeing. Seeing all the aspects of oneself, including it all as one within oneself. And within that, we also can include the world as part of that one instead of all the separation. Gita, hey, hello. I am in a burnout uh, for the first time. The panic attacks are so worse, what can I do? So, sweetheart, as I told you, uh, there's this big, big change going on and whoever usually get panic attacks, it is back at this moment. Don't fear it, it is all a part of this big change is all a part of this uh, movement that has to be done before <laughs> the new beginning so 
um, the best you can do is be with it, with it, be with it, and look into when it occurs. Look into what triggers it, triggers it. Look into which, yeah, <laughs> patterns are still lying uh, underneath. So it is old stuff coming to the surface. And the most important part to remember is your two first burnouts, you survived. You're still here. You grow. You learned a lot. So this third one, there's nothing to fear. It's nothing to fear because you've been there before. You know how low it can go. So even the panic attacks are there. Even the heart is in the throat and lying on the floor, passing out. You're going to survive this. So what we want to focus on is we want to focus on the good things. We want to focus on the peace. We want to focus on... I'm fully allowing the moment of the panic fully and allowing to be in this burnout, find out where it comes from, take a deep breath and then fulfill your life with things that makes you feel comfortable, things that makes you feel safe, things that makes you feel strong. So for me, for example, I also had these panic attacks and uh, I had, I think it was one or two weeks ago. I don't know time, you know, it's so hard. So <laughs> one or two weeks ago, I had 40 degrees in fever. I was completely knocked out. And ever since my heart has been beating out of rhythm. And if there's something I don't like, it's definitely my heart beating out of rhythm. But I know that I'm not supposed to die yet, right? So it's, <laughs> it's something combined with everything that's going on globally. And um, so personally, what I do is I... I cannot keep suppressing whatever it is, if, if there is something. I must allow it to come up. So there comes the outrush of emotions or depression or whatever needs to be expressed. And I fully are with it and I fully allow it. But I always make sure that every day I live, I implant a part of something that makes me feel joyful. Something that makes me laugh. Something where I feel movement. I always work out and some people would say that's too much. But for me, it is uh, feeling one with your body, is feeling strength. So I always apply those two things in my life every day. Something that makes me smile, moving my body, nature. And then for the rest, whatever emotion, the aspect I have to go through, whatever fear, whatever may occur, I do it. Just always come back to center. Gita, well, yes, fear of dying. Yeah, so one thing is your own fear of dying, right? Which is a pattern that's going on for <laughs> as long as you can remember. Another thing is there is so much fear on the planet right now. There's so much going on as a collective. So if there is a center inside of you that is afraid of dying, it will definitely be touched by this collective uh, energy that's going on. It's not one piece of the world. It is global. So don't fear the fear. <laughs> be with it. And um, yeah, be okay with it. It too shall pass, for sure. I know it can be hard. Um, I, Funny enough, I was watching this movie yesterday on Netflix. I am that earthly. And I think six times during this moment, I got these seconds of, oh, but this life is gonna end. <gasps> but this life is gonna end. And which is really funny because of out of all the people in the world, I know there's life after death, right? So, <laughs> so why am I freaking out over this? But it is because that oh, this whole global thing there is going on. So don't worry. As I see it, if I look into you, I don't see it as your firm burnout. I see it as a repetition of whatever is still within your system. Whatever you still need to look into. Uh, look into it. <laughs> It will make it so much better. And you're not supposed to die yet. So you don't have to fear it. Um, mm -hmm. Another question. If you had a family member who were near to death, what would you say to him or her? I know it depends on the, um, on the person, but what's the most important thing in your opinion? 
Sorry, love you. Thank you, and. <laughs> uh, for me, personally, what I would do is I would just show that person as much unconditional love as possible in that moment until that person was no longer here. For some people, uh, for some people, there's things that they need to express before this person goes to the other side. For some people, they have unfinished business somehow, and it is important for them to express or share that. For these piece people, I would say, go do that. Go be there with love and share those moments together. Um, I do believe that that sometimes we really need to look through our own needs and be there for each other. And if somebody is near death, death, I will definitely wish to be there for that person in that moment. Um, and yeah, deal with whatever anger there is afterwards. The funny thing is that it doesn't really matter if he's alive or dead, right? Because when he's dead, you can still deal with all the unsolved stuff. It's not like the person disappeared forever, so it just shifts out of this physical body, embodiment. Um, but this is also a thing for people who have a lot of things with this unsaid, uh, unsolved with people who are no longer alive. It's You can easily look into it. They don't have to be in a physical form. You can solve it within yourself and you can even share it um, out in the open and it will be heard. Okay, Patricia. I really need to work on my pronunciations. <laughs> I lost myself a bit during to panic and an anxiety attack. What can I do to find my way again? I try to meditate, but do not calm my body and my mind. So honestly, what I do, I just go running. You need to find whatever makes you feel calm. You need to find what brings you back in your body and brings you back to a feeling of safety and strength within oneself when we feel panic uh, we uh, we lose groundation and um, <laughs> and you can also measure it on, on your breath you don't breathe the same way and your body is responding differently and and you go into this fight and flight um, state of being so if you're a person with anxiety, I'm just gonna repeat, I think it's the fifth time today, but right now, everybody who have ever had anything is gonna come to the surface. <laughs> I also have these panic attacks. We all have it a little bit more in the moment, and it's okay. It's part of the pro uh, process, not the problem, process. Part of the solution. We just need to own that shit. So, um... You are used to your panic attacks, you are used to your anxiety. When you are in it, allow it to be, but also just tell yourself, well, it will, it too shall pass. It will be okay. And then you do whatever you need to do to feel safe. Whatever you need to do to feel okay until that it has passed. When it has passed and you're back to reality, you can always look into, but can I see what triggered it? Can I see why I feel more stressed? What is it that I need to listen to? Do I have to step back a moment and just be with myself? What is the learning in this process for me? Um, yeah, so if meditation doesn't work for you or calming your body down, because for me that personally doesn't work, if I'm too calm, my blood pressure goes so low because I uh, I have a low low blood pressure, so I pass out, you know. <laughs> so for, uh, and my heart goes like, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? And my body is like, we can't breathe because the blood isn't flowing. So for me, it just works to go into nature. It just works to go for a run and just feel my body, feel my breath, feel this very moment, disattached for anything else than breath and movement. I hope this will help you a little bit. Hey Omar. Um, hey love. In your perception, what is the current planetary alignment three eclipses in a row um, bringing to the surface? 
in us on planet Earth. What can we expect to work through in the coming weeks? I'm curious. So it is really what I already uh, have been mentioning a few times. It is whatever is unsolved within our system is coming to the surface, for better and for worse. Um, but it really gives us the possibility to look at ourselves. And the lesson is to not fight it, but embrace it. The lesson is to, to be with it. First time we were presented for years back, right? Like this 10 year circle. First time we were presented with it, we didn't have the knowledge that we have now. We, don't, we didn't have the faith that we have now. We didn't have the experience we have now. So now when we are facing it, it may feel as heavy, but you are this much further. You are this much more conscious uh, and aware. So you have the ability to change it at this moment. If you are sitting with all these emotions, don't know what is coming from where and why, don't worry about it. Just allow it to flow. Look at it as a glass full of different colors, right? What is happening right now is definitely the pressure is changing. So physiologically, this eclipses <laughs> makes the pressure of the water change, right? So the pressure and the energy frequency is changing, which means that the colors are pressured into different positions within your body, which means that you will perceive it differently and you will respond and react on it differently. And this only brings a, a great gift if we embrace it. If we fight it, um, yeah, it's gonna be a struggle. So therefore, it will be intense for many people. It is and it will still be for a while, but it does bring a lot of beauty with it. Every time we clean out all these things which is holding us back or we re-realize uh, it in a new aspect or perception, we are able to move this much further and this much closer to each other as one unit. Um, so that's the main focus it has been and the next few weeks, well the next period for sure, not only this eclipses, but the next period it is really these things coming to the surface and choose for love, choose for love, choose for peace, choose for standing true within oneself and to by doing that by doing that fully being true to oneself you are true to each other you can embrace each other fully in unconditional love because you are standing within yourself fully i hope this makes sense i hear myself talking but and reading but not really uh, having a conversation, you know. <laughs> One question more: What is it in low spine, sweetie pie? Breathe down there. When you breathe down there, you will feel it. It is um, related to pain and uh, men in your family. Um, can I ask a second question? I have not easy relationship with my mother. Happen a lot. And I find it very difficult to see, talk with her, and feel, and and feels better not to have contact at all. But I will feel a lot of quite. <laughs> but I will feel a lot of quality, and feel it's not normal to break relations. Um. Everything comes in periods, and everything comes when we are ready for it. If there is part of yourself that you're not ready to face, if there's parts within her that for some reason there's not a line within your system and within each other's system yet, and sometimes it is better to take distance from each other instead of keep going into the same pattern over and over again. There is no shame in choosing to uh, create distance for a while. There's no shame in disattaching. Sometimes by ditch attaching you do come closer than ever before if you keep staying in the same structure you keep playing the same games you keep having the same roles therefore nobody's moving anywhere so allow yourself to redraw allow yourself to cut the lines and allow yourself to look into why it is a struggle what is it there is triggered within you what is it 
that she, you do, don't like in her that you actually have yourself? <laughs> uh, what is there is unsaid? What can you do something about and what do you have to just accept? We need to remember that we cannot change others. We can only change ourselves and be the example. We can share feelings, opinions, wisdom, but we cannot change another person. So we need to accept the others. It is our choice. It is our choice 100% if we want them in our life or not. But we must accept them and respect them for the pathways that they have chosen. Thank you so much. You're right. It's very scary. And yes, collective is so hard. Yes. <laughs> but we are doing it together, which makes it beautiful. Hey, Michael. Uh, hi, Helle. What was the movie you were watching on Netflix? Oh, you don't even want to know. It was like a horror movie. <laughs> I'm never going to do it again. Hey, Helle. And you welcome Anna Smila. I love your name so much, by the way, Smila. Who has a name like that? For the, you guys who doesn't know it, this means smiling, smile, Smila, in Danish. Uh, we all have parts where we all have parts there are going to die inside of us in this time. All the lies, for example. <clears throat> so now we are back to this doomsday good and bad talk. And there is a lot of truth to it, but we also need to remember um, in order of becoming one with ourselves, we need to embrace everything we are. So if we go into this judgment of what is lies and what is real and, and this whole battle, we have this battle within ourselves. When we have this battle within ourselves, what we send out is the war which is going on in the world between the good and the bad but if we could embrace everything as a whole there is no good there is no bad there is point zero that means that when you ask if something is dying inside of itself, yes something is sh changing because nothing ever died so it is shifting vibration into what is more aligned with you in this time period and also what is more aligned with the collective in this time period and uh, where we are moving uh, as a planet in the whole planet system that we are part of which means that we do need to have a lighter frequency we do need to have more conscious awareness in order of following the move of the energy which is flowing through our body and our system at this moment we will all feel it in one form or another even that we are not aware of it i will not say that is all the lies that dies it really depends on from person to person um but many of us will reach the point where we realize that fighting isn't the solution. Fighting ourselves isn't the solution. So, yes. <laughs> hey Heidi! Isabella! How to avoid going on a mental hospital when I trap out of the antidepressant medicine? Um, you need to trust yourself. You need to somehow find a safe zone for yourself. Somehow find a way back every time you lose yourself. Somehow find a tool for you to realign, right? So I was at this mental hospital and I am uh, often, uh, <laughs> often influenced by a lot of feelings and emotions and flow. But as I told a bit earlier in this conversation, I always have these two things I do every day. I always imply laughter, happiness, one way or another, and I always imply movement of my body, reconnecting to my body so I feel existence. And for me, that is the key. Yeah, and, and I always drink a big bowl of tea because that grounds me. So um, you need to find these tools that allow you to reincarnate in your body every time that you fly away, every time you get too scared and also grow with it, right? Antidepressants are supposed to help you to not be depressed. But what is depression? It's feelings. And you are feeling all the time anyway. So the only thing you have to de do is deal with the feelings that comes up. Uh, the not so beneficial part about uh, taking uh, medications like this is that 
it is depot medication. So therefore, when you're stepping out, you need to do it gradually because it literally have changed some wires in your brain where your body needs to restructure it. But listen, your body is intelligent. Your mind is intelligent. The universe is intelligent. These three together is a lot more intelligent than any drugs ever existed. So if you truly want to go out of your antidepressant, if you truly feel that that is it for you, you can do it easily. Easily, easily, but, but you can do it. It is all about the mental awareness, the heart awareness, and the awareness of your soul combined it into one. It can be hard, but you have the whole universe to support you. You have us. And, um, and don't fear. It's all about not fearing the feelings. I can have crazy feelings. I have had many times in my life where voices in my head would tell me that I needed to kill myself because... There was no reason for me to be on the planet, right? But it's all a matter of what you do with these voices. It's all a matter of how you choose to react and respond in these situations. And for that you need no medication. You need to choose differently in that moment. Hi, mess. Long time. Hey, big brother. This is funny. <laughs> um, heavy girls and light comes. Hallelujah. Sip or do do do. Whoops. Oh, there you go. Lovely to see you again, Elisa, and all that. My solar plexus has hurt like crazy for the entire week. I welcome any inspiration and guidance from your side. So when you're finished watching this video, watch it uh, all over again because or else I'm gonna repeat myself. But solar plexus is definitely this whole center of self that we're working on. It is whatever expression there is from the past and everything is coming to the surface in this moment because we need to look into that and integrate it as a part of ourself. We've been rising strong and strong and in the light and in that we tend to neglect parts of ourselves because we judge it as not good enough. So this period is all about looking into that and be okay with that. And um, yeah, I've been eating yellow things as well, so I get you. <laughs> Hi Mia, how's it deal with unconscious people? Well, you don't have to deal with them. You have to deal with you. You have to stand up for yourself and be the example and let them do theirs. The only thing we can do is being the example, sharing feelings and not putting our truth upon others, only sharing it in an open forum and let them choose from themselves when they're ready to become conscious. And if not, we love them, we embrace them, but we can just choose to not spend time with them. Okay. I think we are soon going to end for today, but I'm going to read this one. Hey Elisa, what can help me so I stay in my body when I'm sharing my truth in words in front of a group of people? I feel so unsafe and I go away far apart. Sweetie, this is so normal. <laughs> it is because it's new for you. It's uncomfortable to, to stand in that truth. It's so triggering not only for your heart because you are finally standing up in your truth, but also your whole body system is afraid of how it's gonna be present how it's gonna be perceived on the other side. So it will get better in time. Enjoy the experience. <laughs> it will be super boring if we didn't have any reactions to anything. So really truly just be with yourself and do it more and more and more. And in the beginning, it takes time to re recenter. For me, it was the same when I hold these big workshops and stuff in the beginning. I was dying. <laughs> oh my God. But, or when I was doing the boxing and you had to fight and you stand there, you look cool. But inside, I was like, whoa, you know? So it takes so much energy, but it is the journey. And there is really a beautiful experience in the whole process. So. Truly just embrace the process and know that it gets easier in time. Okay guys, this was it for our Q&A today. 
uh, I would love to hear how it felt for you guys. And if I talk too fast, you really need to tell me <laughs> because I just go like yeah, all over the place. And let me know if you like this version better than the the Q and A with the questions on the that somebody reads. Um, yeah, and just thank you so much for being here, being part of this shift and. There, there is so much beautiful stuff happening and there's also a lot of difficult stuff happening and I want you to know that I see and I feel it all um, and it's okay for you guys to be exactly where you are at and just really truly surrender to the moment and the flow of each day you enter and let's see what we can create together as a collective so love you guys and I love to hear how it felt and I'll see you next week. Doo doo. <laughs>